Chicago! This is the first Academy Award and first nomination for Martin Richards. In the aftermath of the exciting Oscar awards, we caught up with Marty Richards, and we're here at his home, and amidst all these beautiful things he has in the New York apartment, one of the things he has added to his collection is the Oscar. And here it is right here, and Marty, congratulations, heartfelt Thank you. congratulations. Thank you very Coming much. Coming from the Hamptons, where our station is, it's always exciting to see the expressions on everyone's face when you walked up to get your award, and here you are, a familiar face to everyone out there. and. Um, how did that feel? That moment must have been incredible for you. Well, first of all, it's nice for someone in the Hamptons to know that we work out there. Uh, we're not all people that just play. How did I feel? Uh, you know, there are no words to explain or my feeling because I went numb. I thought I was prepared and uh, I was sweating through my clothes. Uh -huh. And I turned gray. If ever anyone needed makeup to go on a camera, I needed it. And when I got up there, I became an inarticulate idiot. Mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, I just never envisioned what it is. And when you get up there, the place is so big, and everyone's face is so familiar, except for yours up there. I mean, I'm looking at every star in the world, and then I'm realizing. In fact, I didn't even grab the Oscar. <laughs> I gave it back to Michael Douglas. <laughs> I just felt, what am I going to say? I, I automatically remembered my parents. And it's so funny because I've never ever acknowledged them in the past few years because it sort of happened that my wife took my parents' place when it came to acknowledging someone with thanks because if not for her, my uh, my whole life would not have existed to this point of my this this point in my life. Uh, then I wanted to remember everyone that that uh, that was part of this, and for some ungodly reason, I I remembered a lot of people that were the last phone calls that said, "Don't forget my name," <laughs> but I couldn't remember the ones like Bill Compton who wrote it, and then thank God for Hillary Swank because I had mentioned to her before that uh, I would mention my wife if I ever got up there and she said to me that she had forgotten her husband when she won one. Mm -hmm. And when I got up there I forgot everything. I just went uh, 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 and then it became a town hall meeting. Hillary Swank yelled out, your wife, your wife. And I said, oh, thank you. And I forgot I was up there. Thank you. Yes, my wife and my, my two angels and then, then good, good. Junior kept yelling, Queen Latifah, and I said, thank you, Queen Latifah. <laughs> and then some character in the top said, mm. Bob Fosse, and I forgot again where I was, and I said, I said Bob Fosse. <laughs> and then uh, they were so wonderful. It was They gave me a standing ovation. It was one of the seven or eight standing ovations of the evening. And when they mentioned my name, they all stood. I think they knew that more so they stood for the tenacity of standing by and doing this 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 film, which was a a dream of mine, which had been a fantasy of mine for so many years. I had started it with Bob Fosse three months before he died, mm -hmm. and that was and in uh, when this early mid seventies. That was no, I what was it? it was in the mid eighties when I started working with him. When when did Bobby die? I don't remember his exact date. I I do remember almost going out there to bring back his body with Cy Coleman, but. Gwen wanted just Cy to go out there. And when he died, I threw the script in the drawer and said it would never happen, and I figured it never would happen again. And then um, 
a lot of just so many things. Harvey Weinstein kept calling me for two years, mm -hmm. and not until I saw, uh, not until I saw Strictly Ballroom, mm -hmm. did I think there was a director that could do it. And I went immediately to Harvey, who, who introduced me in L.A. at the Peninsula to Baz Luhrmann, and uh, and he said he would never touch Fosse, and he only did things that he himself developed with his own group. So we then the search began because I had already signed my uh, deal with, with Harvey and Miramax. And by the way, no one knows this. I don't believe that uh, Madonna was the witness to my contract. So her name is on my contract. I'd like to get the original back. Uh, she witnessed my contract. Oh. And that should have said something, I guess. Uh, it's been an incredibly long trip. Mm -hmm. Like over, like over 20 years. It's since 1977. Can I ask you what was it about this particular musical that made you want to take it to the movies so badly and stay with it all these years when other people may not have believed it would work and what made it you know it would work? And obviously you were right. I felt it would work because of Bob, Bob Fosse's concept. And what he was doing is he was doing a condemnation on, on the world as it was then. What made it popular, more popular, was probably the O.J. Simpson trial and, all, and the, and the uh, Amy Fisher trial and the Menendez trial and then all the shows on television. Hmm. And people started to understand what we were talking about by instant celebrity from notoriety, hmm. from infamy, actually, that instead of being punished, we get paid back, we sell books, we, and it, it, that's changed since the Son of Sam ruling. But I believed that we could do it because I loved what he could, what Bobby could do, and after seeing Cabaret and all that jazz and Lenny, and knowing I had him hooked at that time, I sure wasn't going to let him go. And we were very, very good friends. In fact, I never forgot one thing he said at a birthday party I had. And uh, there were just very few people in show business. And he was, my wife made sure it was just friends. And he got up and made a toast and said, I'm getting to hate this guy because I'm getting to love him and I hate loving anyone. And I, I remembered that kind of wonderful cynicism because he was really mush inside. I'm sorry for that phone. Um, but it, it started because he said he wanted to do it, and I bought the rights. And at that time, I bought the rights with Alan Carr. Of course, I wasn't able to afford it at my, on my own at the time. And uh, Alan, after waiting so many years, said, Hey, Marty, I've done two pictures, and I'm getting too old for this. Do you want to buy my hair back? And at that time, I was able to buy it back, and I bought back. I bought I brought back the rights. I worked with Fosse, and we, I, I, I asked Bobby if he would come and uh, see Cheetah Rivera do the part of Roxy mm -hmm. in Atlantic City. And when we went to see it, he said, you know, you're right. You're 100% right. It's a great movie. And, you, and your tenacity is driving me crazy. And uh, he said, I'm going out to do Sweet Charity and uh, out of town as a revival. And when I come back, we'll sit down and talk about pre-production. Ironically, his first choice was Madonna. And, uh, he, and he said, what do you think? And forgive me, Madonna, but this was a long while ago. I said, I'm a hooker to do it with anyone you want to do it with. <laughs> and he said, I'll win her an Oscar. Or I will at least get her a nomination. And he was so right at, at, at that time. His, feelings about things were always great and then as I said when he died we just I just thought it was all over and when I started it again and signed with Harvey Weinstein then you know it just began when I start something I am I'm driven I've been driven that way all my life with anything I've ever done in my career